Welcome to the Bat and Bet Show. I am your host, Gotham City Vig, fresh off Fruit Loops, wheat toast, jelly, butter, <laughs> and some motherfucking grits. Mikey, good morning, baby. How are you? Good. I'm uh, waking up off a hangover uh, after a wedding, so bear with me. <laughs> I guess that's all I'll say. Bro, your skin is as white as I've ever seen it in my entire life. <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling pretty fucking pale, to be honest with you. Dude. I feel like shit. But I did my picks. I did my research before and after. So we'll see how it goes. I love it. All <laughs> right, let's jump into it. NFL, interesting week. We got a bunch of games to get to, so we'll start right after it. First game on the docket is uh, the Detroit Lions at the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, Lions coming off a bye. Uh, a little healthy on offense, maybe a little bit more. Some defensive injuries still a little bit. Line opened at seven and a half Detroit. I think it's been bet down to six and a half now, maybe six and a half in the market in most places. Um, what say Mikey Betts? All right, so the Lions are the Lions. They're dogs at plus six and a half here. They're going to the Cowboys. Dak Prescott is back as well. I don't really care. I, I don't, from that week one game on how we saw him play, I don't think it was the best. Now, we all know that the Lions defense is the worst defense in the league, some would say. So it's kind of hard to take the points at plus six and a half. I might have to go buy it and do plus seven for this for the Lions, but I think my play would be plus six and a half for the Lions. Any uh, props this week that you like uh, stick oh. out in this game with the Dallas offense, Dak coming back? Um, yep. A beat up Detroit t team, you know what I mean? And I think that the Dallas defense has played pretty well this year. Uh, it'll be interesting because Detroit has a decent offensive line, at least they mm -hmm. have, depending on the injuries with this game. And we'll have to look at those a little bit later in the day because a couple of those guys are questionable. But a healthy Detroit offensive line is actually pretty decent in this market. Um, if they're healthy, it should be a really good game. If they're not, then Dallas, you know, could put a lot of pressure on them. Yeah, absolutely. So I got a couple of player props this, uh, this one. I have... You already know Dak Prescott over 260.5 passing yards. I'm going to take that. And then I'm also going to nibble on Dalton Schultz over 28 and a half uh, receiving yards. I feel like this is finally his get right game. He's got a weaker defense he's going to go against and uh, he should be able to put up some yards there. 28 and a half. That's not a lot of points. Yeah. It's going to be really interesting to see number one, you know, when you have this thumb surgery, Gripping the football with this motion here that Dak has problems with is going to be really interesting. Mm -hmm. So the question is, do they let him throw the football a bunch, right? Right. You know, that's the million dollar question. That's the toughest predictor in the game because they have two really good running backs. I don't care what anybody says. Ezekiel Elliott can still play football. He's, He's still powerful dog. in his lower body. You know, you got Pollard too as well. I, I think it'll be interesting to see if they really let Dak or if Dak can do, you know, throw it down the field enough or if he's more of a decoy and they're going to use the short ball control game. Should be really interesting. The over under open to 47 has been bet all the way up to 49. Uh, you know, I get it. I understand why for sure. It looked a little low at the open, but that's what we got for game one. Game two, Giants and the Jags from Florida. Giants open minus two and a half, or excuse me, the Jags open minus two and a half in the market. It's now been bet up to three. Totals 42. The Giants uh, have been playing smoke and mirror football, in my opinion, the entire year very, very well. They've had several covers coming into it. Uh, probably a little tougher strength of schedule for the Jags, I would think, so far than the Giants. What say Mikey Betts? Jaguars. Jaguars, Jaguars, Jaguars. I love this game for the Jaguars. They're in Jacksonville. It's hot in Jacksonville. Not as hot as it was uh, in the summer, but pff, I don't know. I just feel like it's time for the Giants to fall here. Uh, they are frauds. I don't think they're actually a great team. I think they're they're okay. Uh, five and one. I don't think that's what they're like. What they are. So I'm I'm going to take the Jags here, and I feel like the Jags need to get right game, especially after the Colts last week, where they just burnt it and they they, they lost that game. The Colts didn't win that game. The Jags lost that game last week. So uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take uh, the Jags here. I also have a player prop as well. I believe. Nope, I don't. I do not. <clears throat> okay. Uh, next game on the market is the Indy Colts playing the Tennessee Titans. Uh, this game opened, I think, basically maybe three for a flash sack, but really two and a half. I think it's been bet down a little bit. Tennessee's the, listed as the favorite. Um, interesting because they just played recently, right? Mm -hmm. Tennessee won in Indy, correct? Correct. A couple of weeks ago, I believe. 
So now you have a divisional game where the home team lost is coming back in this game. The Colts are getting healthier, right, in this game. The only guy who's not playing is Shaq Leonard, I think, the linebacker for the Colts. <laughs> but Taylor's playing. The wide receiver's playing. Uh, the only other guy I think that's not playing also is Quiddy Pay, the edge rusher for the, for the Colts and stuff like that. What say Mikey Betts? Okay, so right now I'm looking at a plus two and a half. It's going to move to plus three, hopefully. I'm going to take the – this is hard. Let me give a player pop before I give this out. I'm going to give over 88 and a half rushing yards for Derrick Henry. He always goes off against the Colts, and I think that's a beautiful <clears> play. <throat> I think it's my lock of the, the week, actually, is over 80, 88 and a half rushing yards for Derrick Henry, uh, especially with Shaq Leonard being out. I mean, he's the leader. I mean, he doesn't have to play that position, but he's the leader of the team. So without him, it's going to be hard. So I think with that being said, too, I'm going to go ahead and take the Titans minus two and a half. I know the Colts are getting healthier. I just like I like it in Tennessee. Okay. You're picking them to sweep the Colts. Yep. That's what you're doing. Got it. Get the broom. Get the broom. <laughs> kind of like some of these baseball series. <laughs> Boy, that, that Houston, New York series. Oh, dear God. If the Yankees don't win game four. And, I, I, you know, I thought that, that uh, you know, if they were going to win a game, it would have been, they would have come out with some effort in game three. Uh, and then you saw that didn't happen. And uh, woo. There's gonna be some people fired in New York if they lose all four to the the Astros. Absolutely, no I might have to be applying for that GM job if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Hell yeah! Somebody better, somebody better, better recognize the Batman knows what's going on from a you, GM position. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you might, you might be the next George Costanza. <laughs> we'll see though. I would bring so much energy to a franchise. I would get betting the right way inside of the. You know, the stadiums, it would be unbelievable. I mean, I would bring so much to something like that. Hey, Rizzo, I, I need you to strike out this one. I have <laughs> the over. No. No, I don't want to be involved in that. That would, that would be bad. That would be bad. All right, next up on the docket here, uh, Atlanta Falcons and the Cincinnati Bengals. This line opened at six, or at, excuse me, five and a half. It is now six and a half mo most markets. Total is like 47, 47 and a half, maybe taken up a little bit towards 48. The Atlanta Falcons are 6-0, and oh, Mikey, ATS this year. They haven't lost a cover. 6-0. and oh. It's time to lose. Six and oh. That's why it's time to lose. They got to go 6-1 and one after this. Do you know what the percentage chance of a team going 7-0 and oh ATS is in the NFL? Humor me. What is it? 1.92%. That's not happening. That's not happening. You know, that was the same percentage as uh, Derrick Rose being drafted by the Chicago Bulls in 2008. So, oh. could happen. Could uh, happen. Mm -hmm. You know, Mikey. Oh, I think it's the season. Bengals minus six, boys and girls. Bengals minus six and a half. <laughs> you know, this is my favorite song in the NFL. Cincinnati Bengals cheer the team to victory. Touchdown Bengals put some points up on the board. They win that game for Cincinnati. Woo! That's my rendition for you today, Mikey. Enjoy. Shout Slayer out Gotham City Lord. Vig for wearing a Bengals hat or wearing a 49ers hat and drinking a Bengals coffee. Hey, what do you mean? It's right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. And worse is heaven on my Charlie Olive shirt, but I love Max it. betting Makachev for the limit yesterday. <laughs> I love it. That's so fucking funny. <laughs> um, we a couple key key notes here in the game. Atlanta is ranked 32nd in adjusted uh, adjusted sack percentage, worst in the NFL. They're fourth worst in pressures in the NFL. The one thing I can tell you is that Joe Burrow with a clean pocket is really good. Um, Atlanta had a huge physical game and a big win in San Francisco coming off a 6-0 and ATS run. What say Mikey Betts? Yeah, like I said, I'm going to take the Bengals minus six and a half here. I love the Bengals. Um, and, yeah, you're going to see Joe Burrow probably go off today. He's, he's back at home. He's probably just going to go off. So I'm going to take a couple player props here. I love uh, over one and a half touchdowns for Joe Burrow. And then I love this play. Comeback 
and uh, asked me about it later. If it loses and yell at me, Hayden Hurst over 30.5 receiving yards. He's going back to it or Atlanta's going back. It's his former team. You, you know, they always have a little extra juice fired up when they have their former team. So, and uh, they allow a lot of yards to the tight ends. So go ahead and take that. Yeah. You know, what's interesting is they didn't use Hayden Hurst. Like he should have been used. He, he, this kid can play football. Absolutely. And he's got some red ass in him today for sure. So mm-hmm. that'll be interesting. You know, a lot of people are going to hop on, you know, like Jamar chase, cause he had a big week against, you know, the, the saints and all that stuff, but that's an interesting take too, as well. I agree. All right. Next game, the Cleveland Browns. In the Baltimore Ravens, a mega divisional game. This game, this game opened at Baltimore minus seven. It's been bet down. I think it's six now, basically when we're recording. So Cleveland call it six, six and a half totals, 45, 40, 45 and a half, 46. Um, Baltimore is banged up all over the place. Right. And it doesn't mean they don't cover the game, but I'm just saying they are really, really banged up. They, they just have been injured all year. Um, it's been very interesting. They had a, they were up by 10 points in the fourth quarter and the Giants looking like they were going to take them to the woodshed and cover. Not only did they not cover Mikey, they lost. Mm-hmm. This is the third time this year they have been winning and lost the game. Minus 645 and a half. What say Mikey Betts? Uh, I'm going to take plus six and a half for the Browns. I know they're, they're injured, but dude, it's I can't trust the Ravens. The last three games, I can't trust the Ravens. And I don't want to go with trends here. I hate I hate being the trend guy. But three weeks in a row, I, I kind of, I feel like it's just, yeah. And plus, I don't really like Lamar Jackson that much. So <laughs> I'm a little biased. Uh, so I, I don't, you know, every once in a while, I'll dive into the prop market. I do study it. But, you know, it's like when you bet on props all the time, you know, you're banking on that guy not being injured and having the right yeah. scheme drawn up and, you know, and all that stuff. And I think there's real value. I think there's some value in this game. I think that Baltimore is like the 29th worst team against tight end receptions. And I think that Cleveland has maybe one of the top one or two tight ends in the league. And I know everybody will laugh when I say this. David and Joku mm-hmm. is a fucking badass mo. Bow. Yeah, this, to- this total yardage today, I think it's like 35 and a half. 39 and a half, which I already hammered on that one. Thanks for stealing my player prop. Oh, my bad. No, oh, my no bad. I'm joking around. Go ahead. What we saying? didn't even talk either. We didn't even talk about that. I know. So I do like the David and Joku prop a little bit of a receiving yards for, you know, a little fandom. Okay. Hell yeah. I think, uh, well, we're definitely going to ride that one together. So um, that'll be fun. I have also over 50, 51 and a half rushing yards for Lamar Jackson. So okay. why not? Yeah, okay. I don't think I'm going to do that. I, th- I think the, the Browns are going to be blitzing a little bit. So anytime you see a little blitz, you always see Lamar go like this. <laughs> you know, the, you know, those little screens where they have all the dots. With the players yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I, 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 that's what goes on in my head when I think of Lamar Jackson <laughs> getting blitzed. Like, what are you doing? Don't blitz. Dude, can, you ima- can you imagine if we didn't have like TV to watch, but we were watching like Tecmo football, the old school, where you put the little players in the thing. And would go, yeah. I would love it. The Bring it back. Channel. Somebody should start the Dodge channel. That'd be unbelievable. I guarantee you it'd be amazing to watch because when you see dudes go for 50 yards, I mean, that's exciting to watch those dots, by the way. Dude. Oh, yeah. They fly by. Remember Pong? It's the same thing. Pong. Well, yes. I love it. I love it. Uh, next game on the market here. Jesus. What in the hell is this guy doing? Tampa Bay opened at basically 10 and a half. Uh, Mikey, I didn't check the current market. I think it's like, is it still 13 or 13 and a half as we 13 speak? and a half as we speak, bro? I mean, wow, it's, it's a lot of points, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, but Carolina is not an NFL franchise, as you can see. I mean, you know, when you see teams do this, PJ Walker is not an NFL quarterback. I mean, no. you can see his digression without weapons around him, and he's not good enough. Um, you know, they they looked like they were going to cover against uh, you know, the Rams last week. They got until, blown you know, up. until the late third quarter, early fourth quarter, and they 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 didn't have a chance to do that here. I mean, this is so many points, obviously, and Tampa Bay has really regressed. Um, so 13 and a half, the total's like 41. Your boy Tom Brady, Mikey, I, I, I don't know what to say. It's unbelievable when you see athletes to me. This guy has what? How many hundreds of millions of dollars does he have? How many Super Bowls has he won? He has an, an amazing 
you know, wife who is not only gorgeous, but worth probably more money than he is. Mm -hmm. Great family, great kids. And this guy's willing to throw it all away to continue to play football for, I'm going to say it here first, listen to me close. The worst football coach besides Matt rule in the NFL. Wow. Todd Bowles? He is horrendous. He is a non-motivator, non-motivator. The number one thing you need to be is a motivator. He is a non-motivator. He's worse than the clapper for the Cowboys. Put that in your tool bag. I'm telling you, these guys are motivated to play. They, they could, they could, they, they may not cover. They're so bad and so unmotivated. Mm-hmm. I mean, can you imagine if Carolina covers the spread? Everybody's going to bet Tampa Bay in this game. I, I wouldn't touch this game if you, I couldn't even take the seven off the 13 and a half for a teaser. I couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. I just couldn't. I got to watch. What's say Mikey bets? Yeah, I'm staying away from this game too. This is, it's too many points for me. It's too much. So uh, this is one of the plays where I don't have, I don't want to give the listeners a pick just to say it. So I'm just not even going to give a pick. But I will give a player prop. I will give a player prop. I'll give you uh, Mike Evans over 63 and a half receiving yards because he always goes off against the Panthers. So and he you don't need him to be motivated. Mike Evans is motivated every time he shows up to the game. So, yeah, I just it looks like the team doesn't have energy and there's no motivation. They're not in sync. Lenny Fournette has been terrible this year. Their run game's been bad. Yes, they've been banged up on the offensive line. But I mean, still. You know, to this fact, I mean, it, it doesn't get any any worse than what they've gone through. And yeah, they got to figure it out. I, sometimes you got to take a step back and go, holy shit, I got to reevaluate. That ain't happening, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next game on the docket here. Uh, the worthless Green Bay Packers at the bottom of the barrel. Do you ever think we would say that with uh, with this with the great Aaron Rodgers? I think Aaron's a looking like a little too gray in the hair and a little too thin in the skin. What do you think? A huh? little too uh, much. Hayuska? Yeah. I, I dreamed of this moment. I, I'm so happy. I love, I pray on Aaron Rodgers' downfall. That's what I do. I can't stand the guy. Um, four and a half points. You got Taylor Heineke going in there. I thought last week was going to be a get right game for Aaron Rodgers. I was totally wrong. Am I supposed to say that this week going to Washington is a get right game for him? I don't think so. I, I'm going to take Commanders plus four and a half. Yeah. Um, you know, interestingly enough in this game, you know, the Washington uh, defensive pressure rate is terrible. Mm-hmm. You know, Chase Young is still not playing, which is just just Awful. so sad. He's he, That dude is so fun to watch. He's an amazing he's player. I hope he can come back and play. So they're not getting any pressure on the quarterback. They only have one dude, Montez Sweat. You know, this is the best offensive line that Washington has played against, and their pressure rate isn't very good. You got Taylor Heineke coming in. They do have Brian Robinson back. The Green Bay defense has been absolutely the single most disappointing unit in the NFL this year. Mm -hmm. The last several weeks, I I cannot believe how teams have run on this this team. They were they have been very good from a mechanical standpoint of, of help, help holding run games reasonable. And then when Aaron was scoring, they forced teams into throwing the football. That's not happening this year, man. Brian Robinson can run the football, dude. I, I mean, the, Washington is just such a mess and so bad with no pressure rates and stuff like that. Green Bay's as down as you can get. It's the bottom of the barrel. It almost seems like all the people are going to try to bet Washington, and this is a buy low, get right spot on Green Bay to me a little teensy bit. Okay. But that's what I got. You got any props? Uh, over 47 and a half rushing yards for <laughs> Brian Robinson. Okay. I mean, you know, compared to what they've done recently, it, it's a, it's probably a great player prop bet. I mean, mm-hmm. they, they – they and I think that Heineke will be even more efficient than Carson Wentz. So, Absol- absolutely. I think know, it's an upgrade. I, I, I think you've seen the last of Carson Wentz in the NFL, man. I'm just, I'm just being honest. Like, I, I you, you know, he had the perfect team in Philly for a while, you know, and, and now he doesn't have the perfect team and you're seeing him regress. And I think this is the end of the road, in my opinion. I think they'll put him back in there because all the money that they paid him. But I think that this is the end of the road, in my opinion. Next game. Ooh, there's going to be a lot of different people takes on this game. The Jets and the Broncos. Now, the Denver Open hit basically minus three for a a pop, went to two and a half. News came out with injuries this week a little bit. So it started drifting towards the Jets. 
Then Russell Wilson's injury came out, and now it's the Jets minus two. Let me check the updated line there, make sure I'm right. Yeah, I'm looking Jets at it right now. Jets minus two, and the over-under is 37. <laughs> uh, That's disgusting. You're, you're, getting, <laughs> you're getting Brett Rippian, who's played one NFL game, and it just happens to be against the Jets. He was playing for Denver went into New York and they beat the tar and feathers off the Jets in this mm-hmm. one game. What, what a storyline to come back to and stuff like that. Uh, Jets minus two, 37. What say Mikey bet? <sighs> These are, this is another game where I just like, don't even want to play it. Like I don't really want to pick it. Um, maybe he, he does it again. Maybe he does it again. So let's break it down here. Right. So okay. the Denver defense is unbelievable and i'm going to tell you right now that if they had an offense that was sustaining drives scoring points and forcing people to throw the football this would absolutely be the number one ranked defense in the nfl but you have situations where russell isn't scoring points so if the other team scores points then they start running the football and then they don't have the defensive numbers that they always get right the jets have a hard time scoring scoring the ball here right Their wide receivers are going to be locked up in this game with the Denver corners. The million dollar question is, is can Brett Rippian manage the game like he did last time play? Well, I think he's an upgrade from what I've seen. So now you have a line that was minus three Denver all the way to Denver plus the two at home in high altitude with the better defense. Yep. Broncos money line going to hammer it. Even plus, I think the plus one and a half, you said plus two. I'll, I'll take I'll take the spread as well, but I will also take money line on this game. And and I kind of like the over. Kinda yeah, like it's over. really interesting, you know, low total. I mean, you know, we'll see. I mean, you get numbers that low and, and it's so enticing to try to go over. I don't I don't know that I have anything on that, but it's just interesting to me how the game works out and reacts and people think. And, you know, I don't know if, if the 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 trendy better is going to bet the jets. It seems like they are because the public is getting a little bit more heavier to it, yeah. but just something that I see. I love it. Next game, uh, the Houston Texans in the Las Vegas Raiders. Houston uh, oh. The LV, what I say, the Houston, I say, it right. Yeah. Houston Texans, Las Vegas Raiders. Um, this, I think the line is where it is, where it opened still. I, I could be wrong. It may have been seven and a half, but I think it opened at seven. It's still seven. Uh, total is 46 in the market. Um, the Raiders uh, are, you know, trying to, to play better defense. Um, they're still really struggling on that side of the ball. Darren Waller is still hurt. The guy's an unbelievable tight end when healthy. Um, Houston, Davis Mills, you know, bad organization, bad coach, little underperformed this year because I thought they were going to perform a little bit better. Seven's a lot in this style of game uh, with this defense, you know. Uh, what say Mikey Betts as far as uh, that goes in the total? Got anything here? Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and play it safe. I like the Texans plus seven here. I know uh, it's the Raiders at home. Raiders are trying to get right here. But um, actually, no, I'm I'm flipping that. I'm taking the, the Raiders minus seven here. Um, they're, the Raiders are one and four, right? One and four, I believe. They need a win. They need this win. They need the win way more than the Texans need the win because the Texans know that they're not they're the Texans. They know who they are. The Raiders are a team that everybody had high hopes for. You know, you got Devontae Adams on the team. You got Derek Carr. You're supposed to have a great year. Uh, the defense is supposed to show up. And now you're looking at it, and they're one and four, and looking at elimination early off in the in the in the season. So I'm gonna have to take the Raiders. It's do or die for them this week. If they if they lose this game, I'm I'm pretty sure you could say the season is over for them. Yeah, they're they're you got any player props for this game? Do I? Um, Derek Carr over 263 passing yards, 363 and a half. Yeah, this, this is interesting because the Raiders defense gives up a ton of passing yards. Um, you know, they're really, really bad in the back end here. You know, they, they've, you know, the Texans have got a really good running back that's emerging that is playing very well. He's look, he looks mm-hmm. really good. Um, I think it'll be interesting to see if they turn Davis Mills loose because they're going to have to a little bit. I mean, you know, the Raiders have really high powered offensive weapons. They've had a terrible defense for several years. It's a shame they couldn't put a better defensive product in the field. 
Um, is of note, Magic Johnson is buying a huge share of the Vegas Raiders. Uh, that was reported early this morning, I think. Um, interesting. interesting. Oh, the team. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I love, I love Magic Johnson. All right. Next game on the docket, the Kansas City Chiefs. Minus two and a half. It opened there. Still there. I, or it's down to one, one and a half now, I think, in the market. So KC opened minus two and a half. It's down to one and a half in the market. Um, San Francisco is going to have Trent Williams for this game. Um, he is, you know, extremely important, obviously, as far as playing goes. Uh, he's able to neutralize, uh, you know, some of Chris Jones and some of the other dudes in the Kansas City Chiefs side there a little bit. Uh, the entire public world is going to bet the yeah. Kansas City Chiefs simply because they didn't look at the injury list for San Francisco see who's playing in this game. Um, the Chiefs are terrible in the defensive side. They're the worst tackling secondary in the NFL. Uh, Kansas City minus one and a half. What's Mikey Bet set? Yeah, like you said, everybody and their fucking mother is on the Chiefs this week. So I'm going to go ahead and take the 49ers, like the 49ers in this position here. Um, and also over 247 and a half passing yards for my guy, Jimmy G. I don't know if I'm going to take it yet. I might lean towards it, but uh, I wanted to throw it out there so that people hear it. Jimmy G, baby. That's a low number, I think, at least in my world of, you know, looking at props and stuff like that. Right. Uh, Christian, you know, the thing we got to talk about here, if we're going to do this this thing the right way, uh, a big acquisition, you know, for San Francisco. Now, look, you know, everybody says, oh, running backs don't mean anything to the number. Okay, Derrick Henry might be the only guy, you know, in the league. Okay, yeah, I get it. But look, the fact is, is that if you put Jeff Wilson in there, McCaffrey's out in a little slot position yeah. with Debo and with these guys, they are going to become extremely efficient, even more so in the red zone. Okay. So if someone says that it doesn't mean anything to San Francisco, I completely disagree. Does it mean, mean they're going to win the Super Bowl? Absolutely not. But does it mean that they're going to be more efficient? Yeah. Does it mean they could score a little bit more tick up in points? Yeah. Does it mean they're harder to defend? Yeah. Does their offense score more points, make their defense, who is pretty good, by the way, even better? Yes. So, you know, if San Francisco can be healthy, looking at, you know, to make the, the playoffs, to win their division, to win the NFC, it's a good spot, man, for them, and especially before this Chiefs game, because if they win this game today, that number is going to change dramatically. Yeah. All right. So, I, uh, you know, yeah. I yep. That, yep. I yeah. see that. Okay. okay. Nice. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. Touchdown, Bengals. What's the point? Okay. All right. The Cincinnati 49ers, baby. <laughs> Seattle and the LA Chargers. Mikey, don't make me bet this game. Make me stay away. I know, Seattle right? opened at six uh, or plus six. The LA Chargers opened at minus six. And now I think it's like at five. Is it five? I think it's plus four and a half, but we could say plus. Is five. it down to four and a half already? Yeah. It is four and a half in total, 50 and a half. Holy shnikes. At the beginning of the year, if you told me before the season started, that I could get the LA Chargers minus four and a half from yeah. all the players that they had on this team, all the stuff they had going on, brother, it would have been a limit bet. And now, you know, you're, you're seeing, you know, Keen, I mean, Keenan Allen can't, you know, has been out forever. He's a yeah. huge piece to what they do. Uh, is he, you know, what's the latest on him today? I, I've been looking for news and I, I don't know yet that they've said that he is or is not going to play. Um, you know, I heard that is, I think their bye week might be next week. So they may be resting him again, you know, with no Keenan Allen and Seattle scoring all these points and the chargers defense, the second most underperforming unit in the league this year in defense. I cannot believe Mikey with all those players they have on the defensive side that they're not playing better. It's unbelievable to me. It's, uh, it's insane. It's insane. Yeah. 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 Oh. I, I, I really like them. Cause I, I think the sky's the limit for Herbert. I think he's one of the top three, three QBs in the league. He's got a great arm, uh, but, you know, he doesn't have Keenan Allen as boy. And, man, I'll tell you what, when you take away that connection like that, 
you know, it's in trouble. Well, technically, so my, he's still th- questionable. Technically, I mean, we're probably not going to play, but technically, yeah, still questionable, questionable today. Yeah. yeah. No. Just looked it up. So, games later in the day, so you have to keep an eye on that to check and see if he's going to play. And I mean, how desperate is the LA Chargers? You right. Know, you're going to see if he plays. That means that they're desperate in this game. So it's now four and a half, total 50 and a half. What say Mikey Betts? After all what you just said on like everything, all your information, I'm still going to take the fucking Chargers minus four and a half. I'm going to hammer it. I love the play. I don't know. I just, I think the Seahawks stink. They, they've been playing mediocre teams and they've been beating mediocre teams. That's cool. But the Chargers aren't a mediocre team. Obviously without Kane and Allen, that's a huge miss for them. They'll find a way to win this game by more than four and a half points. I think so. Mm, man, this, this should be the feast day for that Charger offense against the Seattle secondary. I mean, you, yeah. you would, see that and this line tick down from the opener six all the way down to four and a half really interesting a lot of lot of lot of public and sharp money on the on the seahawks with no faith in the chargers and you know the la chargers with no home crowd no home support i mean you still got to give them a one maybe a point point and a half or something like that for it but a really really disappointing start for them Absolutely. this could be the day it'll be interesting to see because if the niners can beat the chiefs and kind of get the chiefs a little bit of a loss and the Chargers can somehow come across the board with a win and kind of tick up in the standings a little bit. Maybe this could be their turning point. Got two it. games left. I got two uh, player props, though, real quick. Let oh, me yes, throw these out. Yep. All right, I got Gerald Everett over 37 and a half receiving yards here. This is for the Chargers. I think they're gonna, he's going to light up the sky today against the Seahawks. Uh, and then I also like Will Disley on the other side of the ball. Will Disley over 19 and a half receiving yards. Always shows up, always puts out games. It's either hit or miss for him, so I'm going to go and hit with him this week. So there you go. Got it. Uh, two games left, Sunday and Monday night game. Uh, the Sunday night game, the Miami Dolphins and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Miami with Tua Tagovailoa this week playing uh, against Pittsburgh. Miami is minus seven. Uh, the total is currently 44 and a half. What say Mikey Betts? I like the I like the Dolphins here. I think seven and a half points. I'm kind of scared to take that. I just, if it moves down to six and a half or seven, I would take it. Uh, I might it's, live bet this now, game. It's actually uh, it bet online at seven minus a dollar thirteen right now as we speak. Actually, All right. I'll morning. do seven. I'll do seven. Um, two is back. The energy's right. I think Jalen Waddle is going to have a big game here. Over sixty three and a half receiving yards is what I'm taking for that. Um, yeah, I just like it. I like the game, and I, I don't. To me, it looks like a trap, but I don't think it is a trap because uh, the Steelers stink. I know they just beat the uh, the Bucks, but I don't care. And Love it's it. in Miami. It's in Miami. It's hard to play in Miami. It's so hard to play in Miami. People forget that tonight or today or no, tonight, this morning, I apologize. This morning, it was 70% humidity in the morning in Miami. So who's to say it's obviously going to go down at night, but still watch out for that. Yeah, man. Final game. No, no, that's it. We're good. See you guys. Have have a good one. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I got to do it to you, man. I got to do it to you. Fuck. All right. Let's go. <laughs> the Chicago Bears are playing in prime time again. I have no idea how. Uh, they're, they're traveling to New England. This line opened at seven and a half. It has now been bet up to nine. Um, there is reports that Mac Jones is at least going to be healthy for this game, potentially. Um, you know, I am not Bill Belichick. Uh, I don't think like Bill Belichick. But what my eyes tell me, Mikey, is that the level of Bailey Zappi and Mac Jones is here. Mac Jones... Really? Cannot hold the jockstrap of Bailey Zappi. Look at his reads. He's getting to his second and third receiver. He's throwing touch passes 15, 20 yards down the field, teardrops and dropping it in the bucket. Yeah. He's playing free. He's never seen the NFL. He's never seen the NFL speed. He's never seen any of these things. And this kid goes to Green Bay and they win. Insane. I will tell you right now, Mac Jones, they would not have won that game with Mac Jones in there. I'm telling you right now. Um, so if Belichick trots out Mac Jones, maybe I don't know, man. Maybe I need to reevaluate what my eyes see. And I, I know your eyes can always deceive you, and I understand that whole premise. But I've watched the NFL long enough to know that Bailey Zappi 
is performing at a significantly higher level and making better quality reads than Mac Jones. Nine, what's Mikey Betts say? You said the line's nine right now? It is. Yeah, I'm taking the Bears plus nine, obviously. Don't listen to me, guys, on this one. I'm just t- I'm telling you what I'm taking. I'm taking the Bears plus nine on this one. I'm a Bears fan, so I like to lose when it comes to the Bears. So why not? <laughs> Dare I ask if you have any player prop totals? Um, I do. I'm trying to actually right now, I'm trying to look out, look at the last time the Bears beat the Patriots. I think it was the year of 2000. So there you go. Um, player props for this game. I know I had one. I just, I don't even want to give it out. Uh, all right. Yeah. Herbert over 33.5 re- or rushing yards. I like Khalil Herbert here, and uh, you're seeing to see him start getting more touches every every game. So, Khalil Herbert. What is the what is the David Montgomery rushing total here? Uh, fifty one, and I got one more player prop after this, but fifty one, fifty one and a half. So, for me personally, if I were to max bet a player prop this week, it would probably be that one. Montgomery over fifty one, or Herbert under oh under okay under all right you're gonna max bet the under on montgomery all right if i were to play a player prop very rarely do you see me play player props just because there's so many things that have to go right for yeah. it right no like, yeah 100 you, know, you know the biggest one we had this year was ramondre stevenson you know and and that's the really the last one or two that i've played uh i, I just think that belichick knows what to do i think this front seven of new england is unbelievable legit against the stopping the run um i think the bears get behind have to throw the football and montgomery under the 51 and a half is probably a really good bet in my opinion well i have another good one for you then david montgomery over 11 and a half receiving yards yeah Bang. we'll see we'll see what happens and you know i don't know why the bears don't like this guy man i mean this guy can play football and i understand i like khalil herbert too as well i just don't don't get it I'm really hopeful that Bailey Zappi plays in this game. I really hope that he starts and Belichick doesn't do this to him. Yeah. Um, if, it, you know, all the sports books are going to need, the, you know, the Chicago Bears for everything they need and they have this week. And it's just one of those spots, you know, where you say it. I, I think that New England will also be a big teaser game too as well. You know, I mean, obviously teasing it down to two, you know, in the seven point teaser you know, is probably a really good bet. I mean, if you look at the statistics of what they've done in New England's defense, you know, I think that's probably a solid bet compared to, you know, with another team or something like that. So, you know, maybe a New England, Miami, Miami Bengals, New England Bengals. The the New New England 40 Bengals. Yeah, something like that. We'll make it work. I mean, I think that's like nine teasers I just gave. How many? Out. How many? <laughs> how many team hats do you have, Ben? I feel like every single, uh, single time I see you, you, you're like, all right, well, this is going to be my lock of the week, and then you well, put the hat. Here's on. here's one I don't have. I don't have the Jacksonville Jaguars. Okay, makes don't sense. Have that. You got a Bears one? Sad to say, city of Chicago, don't get mad. I do not have a Chicago Bears hat. See you later, man. <laughs> now, what I'm going to expect in the mail. Or a bunch of Chicago Bears has to show up at the front door. <laughs> That's what you need, yeah. We'll work out. I, I, Mikey, I really like Justin Fields. I really, I said this multiple times on our shows. I like this kid, man. Well, he doesn't you, like me. They got, they got a block one, and they need to get him a wide receiver one. He's got wide receiver fours on this team, man. Yeah, it's terrible. There's no twos and threes, man. How can you expect a guy to throw to these dudes and catch the football? I mean, you've got to help him. And, you know, I see all these data scientists saying, oh, this is all on Justin Fields. All these sacks are on Justin Fields. My man, ain't nobody separating on that wide receiving core to allow him to throw the football. Well, and they say trying not to throw interceptions when people aren't open. And so it leads to chaos is what it leads to. Right, right. And, and then people will say, well, people say in the NFL, like if, if you see the guy is open, it's already too late to throw to him. Right. Basically, when you're in coverage. So I just don't understand. I do understand the Bears are stupid. That's what it is. But the Bears and Justin Fields, I like Justin Fields, but there are a lot of mistakes that he makes on his own. Like he'll hold the ball way too long. He'll crumble. Yeah, sure. He panics I mean, fast. But that's growing pains. It's yeah, the other it's part growing. of, yeah, you need yeah, good You don't have players. the right people developing him, and you no. have no wide receiver ones or twos. I mean, if he, if he was playing in New England, do you know what Belichick would be doing with this dude? 
He'd yeah. be a shining star in this league. Absolutely. He would be a shining star. And everybody would be in Chicago would be sitting there being like, man, why, why couldn't we get Justin Fields on our team, right? Yeah. It isn't about Justin Fields. It's about the, the way you use him, how you block for him, and getting receivers open. And they don't have that, man. And if they could get that to him, then you can start judging this kid. But, my God, the criticism needs to stop until they get him players around him. And then if he can't, you know, make it happen, then it's a different ball game, you know, for the Bears. Yeah, I'm Mikey, just last night, I'm so sorry. I had to bet the Cleveland Cavaliers against your Bulls last night. I'm You're, not really oh, the Bulls. God, I love the Bulls, but go ahead. I like the Bulls too. I, I'm rooting for you because when you're driving in the car on Twitter <laughs> and you're driving and all of a sudden you drive past it, you know, and the song comes. Oh, out, yeah. And no! That guy! Uh-oh. <laughs> Oh, oh, it's the oh, season, man. baby. It's no, we, got, season. we got body parts of the show. Oh, my God. I That's love fabulous. Oh, my dude, man. I love the Bulls. <laughs> <laughs> I do like Zach Levine. He's a, he's a great athlete. Well, I was supposed to go to the game yesterday. I had my cousin's wedding, so I didn't go to the game. I, I gave him tickets to, uh, I think, a buddy of mine. I think uh, a buddy of mine. So uh, I was supposed to go. Thank God I didn't because they got smoked. So. That's dumb. Yeah, the Cavs are for real, man. They've got a really good basket. Yeah, I got a futures on them. Shout out to uh, the eight ball. He gave me a nice little futures for the Cavs. So <laughs> yep, yeah, that. that's a that's a that's a good that's a good solid bet. As long as they stay healthy, they should be pretty good this year and stuff like oh, that. Yeah. So should be great. Mikey, it's been a pleasure. Any final things you want to say before we uh, get out of here today? Well, it's always a great time, Bet. I appreciate it. Make sure everybody goes and place their bets at betonline.ag. Uh, BetOnline is the greatest offshore account you can find, and plus you get your money back right away. Uh, go ahead and use that promo code MikeyBets, M-I-K-E-Y-B-E-T-S. That's promo code MikeyBets one more time. Uh, we would like to thank you guys, obviously, uh, for listening to the show, me and Bet. So uh, we'll see you guys next week, and uh, hopefully we've got some more winners. All right? Mikey, where can they find you, buddy? Find me at Real Mikey Bets anywhere, anytime. Go Google me, baby. And then uh, you find Gotham City Vig at Gotham City Vig on Twitter. Also find him on his premium plays where you can uh, pay 125 schmackaroos at Gotham City Vig 1. And uh, you'll get all his premium plays, which are dynamite. You will make your money over 10 times over. Not a promise, a guarantee. And uh, yeah, so give him a follow at Gotham City Vig 1 and Gotham City Vig. As always, Mikey, it's been fun. For the great Mikey Betts with the white skin today, baby. (laughs) (laughs) Dude, it's terrible. I I don't know if you notice. I think I should have put a two by four behind me just to stand still. This has been the worst podcasting like etiquette I've ever been. Like I'm just out of it. So I apologize to the listeners as well. So (laughs) oh, you look great, baby. You're getting a little pink color. I don't know. I got you. I got you breathing that Chicago Bears. We should have started with the Bears game and your colors card already come back. You look good. So yeah. when you walk into church today, everybody's going to be like, Mikey, what's up? You're going to look good. So. If I'm ever on my deathbed or if I'm ever sick and you, they need me to wake up, talk about the Bears. I'll wake up. I'll be pissed. So I'll make it, it work out. All right? I love For the real Mikey bets, I'm Gotham City Vig. Hope you've enjoyed it. Have some fun. See you on the other side. See you next week.